Hello, I'm Vishal Krishna, the founder and editor of TheUpstreamLife.com. If you've come so far, you've got to like and subscribe because I'm at Elasticon, where you forge the future with Search AI. Of course, you know what I'm talking about. I'm with Elastic, of course. And I'm with Ajay Nair, who's the general manager of platforms at Elastic. We're going to talk about generative AI and how is it going to change your corporation. Enjoy the podcast and let me know what you think. Ajay, thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you for having me. So... All the CTOs out there, please like and subscribe because that keeps us happy. And Ajay, we're going to answer their questions. Sounds good. Which are now my questions. Yeah. The hype around generative AI. Everybody wants to use it. But then again, the big question mark is, is it going to be of value to us? Isn't that the question on all our minds yes. right now about where the hype of generative AI is going? Um, I like to think of generative AI um, as a data problem, right? Uh, I think a lot of conversations end up focusing about the quality of models and what large language models are brought to the forefront. But realistically, when we talk to our customers about mm. where generative AI is making a difference, it's when they're able to synthesize their data into signal yeah. and action. Uh, and so when I look at it, I think the best place for, uh, the place where I'm seeing hype translate into reality is when you're able to generate the right context for generative AI to go, be put to work. Uh, in Elastic, uh, we see places where uh, people are putting it to work for cybersecurity or where they're able to put large amounts of threat data in the hands of a generative AI model and come up with new angles of attack discovery and figuring it out where humans couldn't do it before. Um, we have customers who are putting it in service of our customer support where they're able to use all the knowledge base that they've built uh, for supporting their customers and then synthesize that into resolutions that are speeding things up for them. Uh, so ultimately for me, I think you know it'll be interesting to see how the hype evolves, but once you're able to ground generative AI and large yeah. language models in the right data, uh, it is far more useful for making things more efficient, more yeah. productive, and ultimately more valuable for businesses out there. Let's throw some color. Yes. When they move these pilots to their building, to real world applications, yes. what should they be ready for? It's a great question. Thank you. So, uh, no, I mean, it, it, <laughs> I have had to, I've been in the shoes of your customers as well. You know, our internal use of AI is also exploding. Uh, I think there's three things that, that jump out very quickly. Uh, so first, model choice makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think when people look at the explosion of models that are out there, the leaderboard is is changing very, very frequently. So how the model works within the context of the application trying to build versus customer support versus mm -hmm. coding makes a huge difference, right? Second, uh, when you're moving into production, uh, a lot you have to have clarity as to what you're putting into yeah. work for. Uh, one of the challenges I've heard from my peer leaders is mm -hmm. they're like, I'm doing generative AI, what's the question? <laughs> right? uh, and, and so uh, figuring out that generative AI is going to help me be more efficient in customer support or threat detection or incident response uh, or just you know getting more out of the knowledge base that I already have is going to be extremely critical. So having a crisp answer of where you're putting it to work is going to be the second one. And then the third one is going to be making sure that it is grounded in the right context. Yes. Right? So... One thing we see a lot with Elastic customers uh, is the fact that um, by using Elastic both as a vector store for grounding, say, um, RAG applications yeah. for using various LLMs or using it as a source of truth for grounding your LLM to make sure it is working off the right yeah. unstructured data signal, uh, you are able to get far more relevance and far more actionable insight. Yes. Right? You do not want to be in a situation where your model is only working off uh, wrong things. It doesn't matter yeah. how good the, the the model is. If you feed it wrong, it's going to be telling you wrong. Tell me about it. I mean, think about all the industries in the compliance space. Yes, oh, exactly. Healthcare, for example. Yep, insurance. <laughs> it's it's a nightmare when your AI hallucinates. Exactly. Right? That's, hallucination is not a word you want to associate <laughs> with healthcare and insurance and security, for sure. So that's the assurance that Elastic brings on board. Right. I, I think the assurance over there is uh, Elastic's always been yeah. synonymous with search. Yes. And search as superpower has always been relevant. Yeah. Right. So extracting the single needle from a haystack, yeah. signal from data, has always been the Elastic superpower. And so in a world of generative AI, where you already have the ability to search across vast amount of unstructured data, be it PDFs or logs or images yeah. or otherwise, and then deriving the right signal to make your LLM more mm -hmm. intelligent mm -hmm. and therefore making it better for the workflows that you're yeah. putting into, that's where Elastic really differentiates itself in, in the world of generative Interesting AI. time, thousands of apps in an organization. Yeah. 
brain context. Yeah. I hope they come to Elastic for that, right? I hope so. Right? <laughs> okay. Now the question is, they at least acknowledge the problem in the room. Yes. Uh, how to adopt AI in the search side of things. Yeah. How do you make it economically sustainable? Does that come up in the conversation at all? It, it does. So if you look at the way uh, generative AI applications are put out there, yeah. what drives your cost, mm -hmm. right? Most often, the number one thing we hear from customers is they're actually spending too much on uh, how much computational power they're spending in order to get the answer that they're looking for. Yes. And a lot of time, it actually breaks down into two things. One is the amount of data it is consuming to get that valuable and the amount of times it has to go back to the well uh, yeah. to find the right answer for Correct. it. Uh, and so both of those are aspects where Elastic actually really makes a big difference. So one, in how efficiently you're able to store aspects like vectors as well as your lexic unstructured data in lexical formats, uh, Elastic gives you very efficient models for going and doing so, right? We have innovations like better binary quantization about how vectors are represented on disk that give you anywhere from you know 50% better memory and mm -hmm. better disk utilization over there. And the second part is how often your model has to dip back yeah. into the well, right? The relevance question, thing we're talking about. Yes. Key question, yeah. right? So <laughs> instead of going back to four <laughs> times to say, not it, not it, not it, Elastic is able to make it a one and done nice. uh, round trip for you nice. as an LLM, right? So your LLM becomes that much more smarter when it's working off the right relevant source. Okay, yeah. uh, observability. Yes. Keywords in your conference today. Yes. Um, you know, it's almost like forging the future. Yep. That's what we're talking about. Yep. So what do you mean by that? Is it ap applicable only in the security layer or much more? You know, forging the future is a, it, you have to attend the entire conference yeah. to really get a picture yeah. about that. I like to think about uh, observability as an old school problem in a new world data yeah. era, right? Uh, ultimately, we all have to figure out how our systems are operating, mm -hmm. how to make them more efficient and secure for serving our customers as stands yeah. over there. And historically, observability has always been considered to be a, a extracting signal from noise problem, right? Something that AI actually yeah. excels at. Uh, logs is a great example of that where you have, people have decades of logs, you know, ter terabytes of logs sitting around and they don't know what to do yeah. with it. That is a place where we are really seeing LLMs make a huge difference and AI applications come out where they're able to derive uh, patterns and signals from logs in order to figure out what to improve the experience for customers. So, okay. for example, um, uh, we have uh, in our conference, we talked about using LLMs from extracting significant events from your logs and helping you diag uh, diagnose that. The same thing applies to cybersecurity yeah. threats. Again, a logs and data problem. Yeah. Um, in the old days, we just had alerts. Right? You just had alerts, yeah. right? Exactly. And and alerts ultimately are working off their synthesized signals from your raw data. <laughs> Today, now you can use LLMs to do that synthesis for you. So these are great examples of uh, humans where they were doing efficient work for yeah. deriving signal from noise from raw data. Elastic and putting LLMs to work is able to do that uh, on your behalf as well as it pushes over there. Great, great answer. And again, talking, you know, in, in the C, in the CTO's uh, perspective, they talk about, hey, man, we have multi-data centers, multi-cloud environments, yep. on-prem, outside. Yep. These are these are questions that they grapple with. And, yes. And again, going back, compliance industries, insurance, healthcare, oh, yes. God, maybe even defense. Yep. How do, you, how do they handle this? How do they say that, look, I need this <laughs> these quick insights. Yep. And my team needs it now because my... You know, the marketing folks always want sales, 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 yes. and also sales folks, yeah. right? But to get that insight, how does uh, you know navigating the serverless, multi-cloud, and one help with search AI? Uh, you know, fragmentation is a real problem today, right? Uh, I have especially seen that among our Indian customers so about over uh, the years, over the years, years, right? Especially when you have uh, places like India where the technology is evolved in leaps yeah. and bounds. That means you have data now stratified across a whole class of different environments that are sitting over there. And now you have a situation where you want to put that data to work. How do you yes. go about doing so? Correct. Uh, this is actually one of the strengths of uh, Elastic because we offer, uh, we talk about it as Elastic your way, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you take the core platform that Elastic offers, it's available in a self-managed hosted environment. Uh, you're able to run it as a uh, hosted solution, which Elastic runs it for you. And then we have a completely serverless offering where you consume it much like a software as a service as it goes over there with the exact same capabilities that are underpinning okay. it. We also have customers who are able to cross-pollinate between them. So you're able to retrieve data that is sitting on hosted with serverless, correlate that uh, using cross-search mm -hmm. capabilities that are mm -hmm. sitting over there. 
So they're able to put that data to work um, uh, collectively together. And this is where we truly believe that you want to be able to say, you know, we're able to meet customers where they are uh, and their, their data stays where they are yeah. for compliance reasons, et cetera. But you still should be able to bring AI to your data where it needs to be and, and run from particular there. Yeah. The interesting aspect is that you guys serve most of the Fortune 500 companies. Many of them use yeah. it. 50% more. Yeah. yeah. So what, what can be the use case for India? You were right, we have leapfrogged technology yes. and I'm sure we'll adopt AI at a different scale. Yes. But Indian companies, frankly, have not brought technology very very nicely. I mean, let, they always look at cost as a perspective, right? Of course. So we to cover the economically sustainable yes. part of it. But I'd like to know what's going to happen from the Indian standpoint. I see a lot of new startups becoming large companies. Yes. We've already seen that yep. uh, over the last 10 years. Yep. How are they reacting? Let's look at uh, these companies now in the mid-sized range. Yep. How are they talking about this subject? And look, let's work with Elastic. We need insights yeah. from AI. That's one. And the smaller startups, how could they work with you? Yep. And the large enterprises, what are they saying? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how much time do we have? Right? We have time. A lot of time. <laughs> the, um, I actually think India is pushing much better than other regions are yes. uh, when it comes to AI adoption. There is a real hunger and aspiration to put AI to work uh, and be a digital leader when it comes to these particular spaces. Um, there are actually three domains I've seen it show quite a bit up. One is in the general uh, BFSI space, mm -hmm. specifically in areas like uh, insurance or or uh, financial model predictions, mm -hmm. right? So uh, putting AI to work where the financial transaction data or the signals around them are stored within Elasticsearch mm -hmm. uh, and then using predictive models for helping customers mm -hmm. either close their transaction faster from you know uh, approvals within 30 yeah. seconds as a customer who's been able to improve their response rates to where it goes over there. Uh, second is, again, the conventional infrastructure spaces we are talking about, cybersecurity, observability. Mm -hmm. Those are bread and butter use cases where you are already seeing engineers and developers get far more productive on how they're operating services on behalf of their customers mm -hmm. and using Elastic as a way yeah. uh, to uh, put LLMs to work to figure out incident response, threat detection, mm -hmm. uh, improving their uptimes and ultimately the yeah. experience that their customers are facing over there. The third interesting one uh, is, you know, conventionally we would have thought about it as application search, you know, the box yes. on a website where you go and type and find your, your products. Like a so, dashboard. Like a, just... Right, dashboard or, you know, uh, just a classic Google search. Those are now rapidly getting replaced by much more chat and agentic driven applications over there. And there, uh, Elastic is being leveraged more as a vector store and as a hybrid yeah. store, a hybrid search engine yeah. uh, for storing all that unstructured data, yeah. be it your product catalog, um, or uh, looking at your customer yeah. support conversations and then giving customers a much more natural language responses to what they're looking for, uh, right? So, we have a, a, you know, Cisco, for example, has built yeah. uh, a solution that is running uh, on Elastic for serving yeah. its, its customer response tickets yeah. and now 90% of their customer service tickets okay. are actually being responded through this, through wow. this system. Wow. So, th that's what I see among the yeah. large customers. Yeah. The same model applies to smaller. They will yeah. have smaller companies. They'll have domains to go and innovate. My bet for them would be you optimize for like a serverless offering or a much more SaaS one. So you are cutting straight to the chase, right? Like yeah. focus on what differentiates you. Focus on time to market. Mm -hmm. You're not optimizing or worrying about existing yeah. infrastructure control. You can run much faster. So they can take pieces, pieces of such. They can take AI. Yeah, they can take they can That's take pieces thing. of the foundational yeah. infrastructure and run it hmm. their way, right? As and choose. And what are your thoughts on uh, the developer community that we met today? It's fabulous, isn't it? Oh, it's. I mean, you remember amazing. there were small communities <laughs> in the past. It's. it's yeah. I've seen more than thousand people. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, in a conference it, like this, in the, in in the morning hour, it's like rush hour. Everyone's here <laughs> at the Elastic Con. So that's saying I mean, something in my Yes, yes. Beating the traffic, <laughs> Beating getting there on time, starting on time. We did start on time, didn't we? So what that's are your amazing. thoughts on the developer community and their support to industry and how, why is it important for you? I, I, I think the energy and caliber of questions mm -hmm. is an order of magnitude yeah. better than that I've seen yeah. in other communities, right? So, uh, you know, where other places, there's a much more tentative exploration of saying, mm -hmm. I know what to do with models. I know what to do with data. What do I do over here? Here you're getting the next level of questions, right? Which is, I have my model figured out. How do yeah. I improve the relevance at which is responding? How do I integrate agentic behaviors mm. into my existing application workflows? What haven't I thought of? Like that curiosity question I've heard multiple times today, right? And that curiosity really differentiates the Indian developer community. I mean, this is fascinating. Now you put a you put a seed in my head. I, you know, you, these are the future CTOs. Yes, these and are. And I'm the sure CTOs. these guys are figuring out business outcomes. Isn't exactly. that heartful? 
Uh, you know, <laughs> we have spent decades helping engineers understand that mental mind, mod, you know, mental I know what state. Mean, yes. and, and here you have people coming up from day one and thinking about it. So uh, it just makes conversations for people like me that much more delightful and easier because once you're working back from a real problem, especially with a wave like AI, you are already solved half the problem right there, right? You're ap applying it to a place where it'll actually add value. You know, you manage platforms, yes. right? At Elastic, your advice to developers today. <laughs> oh, uh, so in a in a platform role, uh, I I joke that my job has to is to both move slow and both move fast, right? And I think that's a challenge that a lot of our engineers are going to face in a generative AI world. You're going to have to figure out how to make sure your foundations are really really strong in terms of how you keep your data secure, how do you make, keep your compute isolated, uh, how do you make sure that you're scaling in effective ways to handle all the traffic you're getting over there. But at the same time, you have to have the mental model yeah. about how do you innovate very, very quickly right. on the experiences that your customers are seeing out there, right? Even a year ago, we all were talking about RAG. Now, RAG is yesteryear. I now, agree. we're talking about Agentic. Tomorrow, it is going to be something else that shows up over there. This is a very fast-moving world. So, as a developer, get comfortable on those two paces, mm -hmm. right? You have to yeah. move slow and you have to move fast, and both of those are going to be your job. And you've offered free courses I, so offered that they can go check it out. <laughs> there you go. And and this is, I think this is actually one of the beauty of Elastic is you have the ability to build really powerful experiences on top of it, and a lot of the foundational elements are baked into Elastic as well. So there's free training now available for <laughs> about 28 courses that cover how you can put Elastic to work for search, observe, yeah. and security. And I can't think of a better foundation personally yeah. that and, and they, can the they can grow their business, add value to everybody's life. Yeah, and uh, and you know, hopefully, Elastic is part of their journey as they Absolutely. do so. And let's uh, forge the future together. And yes. if you come so far again, like, subscribe, ask questions. It makes my life happy, and <laughs> Ajay can answer those. Of course, look thank you. Thank you.